just a quick update on the Elegoo Neptune 4 that was having the Moonraker timeout error. It is back to working well, and that's really nice because it's a big printer and I wanted to use it. Over here, I actually kept the box because I was planning to ship it back because it sucked and it was broken, but I was able to fix it. And of course, that was without any help from Elegoo support. They said that there actually wasn't a way to fix it um, without replacing or uh, making uh, or replacing the firmware on the EMMC. Uh, what is this, a card or chip? I don't know. Um, and they did send me a new one, but I didn't go that route. As you can see, this is still in the package. So after a bit of alcohol and uh, some messing with it, I was able to SSH into it, upgrade the version of Java, reinstall uh, Clipper mainsail instead of Fluid, as well as, um, as well as Moonrick, and actually make a few changes there. And uh, it seemed to with, um, I think there was the permission script fix and some other changes, I was able to get it working again. I also put this iPad up here because it helps me do some things that you can't do on the screen, of course, like view the wonky bed, which is not quite perfect. See, there's some variance there, but at least you can do this on it and you can calibrate that as well as doing like the probe calibration and the screws tilt calculate where it tells you like how far you need to screw these so that you can have as flat a bed as it's gonna give you. But yeah, it does work now and that is pretty dang nice. So basically, this is quickly what I did to fix it. I just like turned it on and off again until I could finally get to the WLAN uh, page so that I could connect to the Wi-Fi. And once I connected to the Wi-Fi, then I can SSH into it from the computer, which is basically remotely accessing it so that I can work on it. All right, so I'm gonna show you uh, what I did or close to what I did anyway um, to fix this issue for me. Um, again, this is only something you should do if your machine completely isn't working. If it's giving you that Moonraker timeout error and you can't do anything, like, don't try this because I don't 100% know exactly what the problem was, but um, this is what I did. So again, if something happens to your machine and it's a result of this, don't blame it on me, right? You got to contact Elegoo support if you want full support. This is a suggestion of what, I, what to do um, based on what I did. And these are the steps that I took to resolve the issue for myself. Um, so, uh, beyond that, let's, let's jump into it and I can show you what I did. So taking the IP address that you got off the machine, you should be able to SSH from a computer, um, over to that device, as long as it's on your Wi-Fi, uh, over to that machine. Um, so, uh, if, if you're in uh, windows, you can use putty and just put it in there and, um, you know, put the IP address in there and hit connect. And it's going to give you a prompt uh, for the username. Uh, actually, it's going to ask you if you accept the SSH keys and you're going to say yeah. Um, and then enter the username, which is MKS. And then it's going to prompt you for a password, which is MakerBase. And that should be the, sim the same for any um, any of those uh, Neptune 4 machines. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you can do uh, you can open up Terminal and then do SSH MKS at the machine. So 192 dot, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, and then hit enter and it's going to prompt you for the password. Actually, it's going to ask you if you accept the SSH keys, hit yes, um, and then, or enter yes, and then enter the password and make base. And then you should be put into the home slash MKS directory. And this is a, uh, a Linux, uh, uh, system. So if you're familiar with Linux, working Linux, this should be familiar to you. Um, you are logged in again as MKS, um, from here. Basically, there's a tool called uh, Kaya. It's K-I-A-U-H, and it's pre-installed on the, these machines. If not, there's a separate way to download it and install it, but um, it is installed on these machines, and that's what you can use to um, to uninstall and reinstall Clipper, uh, Moonraker, and Fluid. If those are if Fluid came on your machine, which it should have, that's the web uh, GUI for your machine that you can access via that same IP address. Um, I installed Mainsail because I think it uses fewer resources and I liked it better, um, but you can reinstall Fluid if you want. Um, but I would say uninstall them all and then reinstall them all. So to do that, um, you just click, you kick it off with a dot slash and then it's in the uh, Kaya directory slash Kaya.sh and hit enter. And then from there, it's gonna give you options on like an update. Um, it's going to give you options to install, update, remove things. So you're going to hit three to remove, and then you're going to select the thing. Hit one, two, three, right? And then you can go back and just remove um, Clipper, Moonraker, and Fluid. And then I'm not going to do it because everything's working for me. I don't want to break anything. Um, then you're going to go back and reinstall everything. So just do one, 
and then uh, it's going to ask me the password, right? And then you're going to install Clipper, Moonraker, and uh, Mainsail or Fluid. It's going to take longer than it did to uninstall. That's okay. Um, but everything should work there. Um, the other thing that I would have you do as well um, is to install, um, we're gonna go to four and install the G code shell command, that's option eight. So if, if you're on that main screen again, you're gonna hit uh, four to go to the advanced menu and then um, perform action eight, install the G code shell command. That's just gonna give access to a few things that are in the config file that I'm gonna share with you. Um, that'll make things just work for you. So um, after that, you can hit Q for quit and get out of that. And then uh, after that, um, we're gonna create a new file um, in the printer data slash system V directory. So we're gonna go to CD printer and you can just hit tab to go to printer underscore data slash system V. And we're gonna create a file. I like to use VI. Um, you can use nano as well. So you do nano and then the file name, which is gonna be clipper.env. Uh, it shouldn't be already there. It wasn't there for me, um, but it might be there for you. If it is, you might want to modify it. Um, if, if, if it wasn't there, then you can just create it. Same thing with VI. Um, it's just a different you know, tool set, I guess. Um, VI to clipper.env. I already have one, so I'm going to call mine env1. Um, but basically what it's going to look like is... Uh, actually, I can just show you mine. Um, it's going to look like this. It's going to have these arguments, and one of them is basically to point to the right a directory for this clippy.py, which is a, a, a Python script, I don't know, um, that is going to point uh, to Clippy, which basically is the thing that connects uh, Moonraker to Clipper, I believe. And that's what makes your um, machine work. And so when you're starting it up and it says Moonraker timeout, that means it can't connect to Moonraker. Clipper can't connect to Moonraker. And I think that's part of the problem. Um, there's probably some other stuff missing too, but um, that's why we reinstalled everything. Um, so it's going to point to this printer.cfg file, which is all your configurations settings for your printer. That's like when you go to settings and make changes that updates the printer.cfg file. And then um, some other stuff here as well. Um, it's going to point to the right uh, path for that Clippy also. So I'm going to put this in the description, just, just paste this in here. And then um, to get out of... Um, to get out of VI, you're going to do shift and then do enter a colon, right? And then hit Q and then hit enter. And if you made any changes, it's going to ask you if you want to, right? And just say, yeah. Um, and enter. If it's nano, um, I think it's like command X or control X to get to exit. And then it's going to say, if, ask if you want to overwrite it or write it. And you just hit Y and then you have your file created. And you can actually look to see if you have your file created by doing ls clipper and then you can do you can do like less uh, clipper.env and see what's in there and hit q to exit that that's fine or you can do clip cat clipper.env and show it that way too so um that should be there and then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to replace uh the moonraker.cfg or moonraker.conf uh printer.cfg and um and uh, plr.cfg, but we can do that actually from the uh, mainsail interface. Um, I'm gonna put those files that I have uh, up there um, for you to, to access as well. Those are the settings that I used and that seem to be working for me. Um, it just gives um, everything that you need and it should be pointed in the right direction basically for everything. So um, you can either do that, you know, you can, if you're in here and you want to do that, it's in the printer data uh, slash config directory. And those files are here, moonraker.com, plr.cfg, and printer.cfg. Um, you can certainly, you know, VI those files, or nano them, or whatever, edit them here if you'd like. Um, again, uh, after this, though, you're going to just restart. So I would do, like, sudo reboot now, or um, I think you could even do sudo restart, and it'll do the same thing. And that'll restart your printer, and it should come up. It shouldn't give you that moonraker. Um, timeout error. Hopefully that works for you because um, again, it did work for me. Um, and then you can go uh, just in the browser, go to that same IP address. It should load mainsail or fluid. And then in mainsail, you go to machine and edit that. You can see that file. You can click into it and edit it, paste the values in there. Um, if it's uh, fluid, I think it's under configuration and go to that file and edit it there. So um, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope that worked for you. 
Um, if not, I would contact Elegoo Support and they should send you a new EMMC so that you can just replace that. It's a little piece of hardware. It's a little, little chip you can replace right in the machine. So hope that helped.